It's been a, it's, um, I was working in the garage with my other son, Chris. We were working on a piece of uh, wood, uh, cutting a frame for a, we want to make a frame, and I was showing him how to make the frame, and I was cutting little corner pieces for it. I was using a, a circular saw, and I, I hurt my back. I was in such intense pain for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday last week. I wasn't here. Monday, Tuesday, I started feeling better, finally. Um, but so I mean, I had a lot of chance to sit in my chair and not do nothing. Oh, that's such a good thing. You know, it's such a good thing sometimes just to stop and just trust in the Lord for everything, amen. And that's what I was doing. I was just like, okay, God, I, this happened again. Uh, maybe I should have been, had my knees bent when I cut it or put the board on the bench and cut it so it was up at this height instead of leaning over and doing it, you know. Maybe that would have been better for my back or whatever. But, you know, I think I think we all go through things in life for a reason. Amen? And so if it's a bad thing that happens or it's a good thing, it's like God is worthy to be praised anyway, right? Continuously. And I think we need to be reminded of that a little bit once in a while. I think that's why I want to speak on this today. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 is where we're going to be at. Uh, please turn your Bibles there or your cell phone or whatever you have. Um, Philippians chapter 4. Uh, we need to be encouraged sometimes. We need to be strengthened. We need to know that, hey, God can do it. I love the songs today. We, God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Praise Him. Thank Him. Glorify Him. Whatever. Never, never doubt that God can take care of your situation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thought, I knew it was going to be hard talking about this today a little bit because I kind of know all you, some of the people here of all their situations. It's kind of difficult to, to try to, uh, uh, I can't use your stories, you know, because I'm preaching. I, don't wanna, you know, I, wanna, I just want to know that today God is going to take care of. If we will listen to what the Spirit of God says today, I think we can leave here rejoicing and knowing that our God will take care of all our needs according to His riches and glory. Amen. Uh, so a few seven thousand dollars, that's nothing, you know. I it's nothing. That's that's just God has taken care of so much for us over the years, it's just crazy. Uh, how do you how does uh, how does that work? I don't know. I think it's just trusting God. Right? It's just believing that God can do what he said he can do. So when I, I believe that when I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins that day, I knew I was forgiven. Right? I don't go back and readdress God. Did, did, did you really forgive my sins? No, I know, right? I know he did it. I know sometimes we have to remind ourselves that when we lay at the feet of Jesus, we just leave it there and not pick it back up again. Amen. Right? So uh, I, want to, I, want to, I, want, I really want to encourage you today. So chapter 4, uh, verse 4 says this. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice, Paul said. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests unto God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Can you hear? Can I, everybody say amen. 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 Right? Let me read that last part. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, your mind, your, your intelligence, anything that you are, you can't understand. It is impossible uh, to understand it. Will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. amen. I, I won't preach that first part, that last part first, but it says rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Paul's saying rejoice, be happy, celebrate. Rejoice is like not just being uh, happy, but it's like a, above happiness, right? It's, it, it takes you another level. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to thank God. He is awesome and he's, he's wonderful. It's, it's, it's full of, I think rejoicing is full of joy, right? I think rejoicing is like I'm glad I'm joyful, right? Matter of fact, I don't even care if anybody knows I'm joyful. I'm just going to be happy anyway. Come on, I'm just like that, besides me. Right? Just, just kind of be happy. 
And you know, and, 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 and even in every situation, it doesn't matter, just rejoice in that situation. And then like it's like getting up in the morning, you can say, get up in the morning, and I see Tina, and I say, hey Tina, ha hallelujah, it's a brand new day. How many get up like that? Not too many, right? Okay, well, just try it, try, try it this week. As soon as you open your eyes, before you, you know, say, oh my goodness, I gotta get up for work. Before you get that thought in your head, just say, praise God, it's a new day. Huh? Try it. Well, I'm just going to try that this week. Just try it. See what happens. Next week, report to me and tell me how your week went. Amen? Rejoice in all circumstances. But Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. I, no, I don't. Well, I do. Some of you. I know. But guess what? We're going to be happy anyway. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, think about Job for a second. The story of Job. Does everybody know the story? I mean, Job lost everything. Right? I mean, he had so much wealth. It was crazy how much wealth he had. He had like 7,000 sheep. I don't know how much a sheep costs today, but it's a lot of money. He had like 500 camels. He had 300 donkeys. I mean, he had children. He had a wonderful wife. He had all those wonderful things, and he lost everything. But you know, he never denied God, did he? His friends came to him and said, you know, you must have sin in your life. There must be something, you must be doing something wrong. I mean, think of that. When you go through trials and tribulations in your life, you think you've done something wrong. Right? Oh, you start examining yourself. It's a good thing to do. Don't get me wrong. It's not a, okay, is there something wrong with me? I think it's our first thing. We want to look at ourselves. We know, did I do anything wrong? Uh, but no, sometimes we just go through stuff in life. Stuff happens, right? And God will take us through everything. And what's interesting, when you go through those things, God is teaching you something. Don't miss that point. When you go through a trial and tribulation, I think God is teaching us. Maybe it's to increase our faith to say, no matter what, God, I will not want to deny you. No matter what, God. No matter. Look, I think about those refugees. You know, I know most of them are, are coming from Muslim countries. They're probably not Christians, but there's Christians already prepared in places strategically to minister food and water and clothing and love to them. Why do you do this? I know. I, I already know some of the stories I'm going to hear. There's going to be people that, that come to Jesus because the Christians were loving and caring, and they were killing the Christians just a few hundred miles away, right? It's going to be an amazing uh, testimony that we're going to hear. And uh, Aaron and Winnie, the, the couple that they were here, um, and, and uh, we had supported them in the past. We haven't supported them in a while. We just gave them a big check when they left here. Uh, but, you know, I would like to just start supporting them again. You know, maybe we should take a $7,500 collection up for them and send it to them so they can feed more people. Right? Would that be awesome? That's what my thought was when you're talk, passing that out. Again, you just talked about Aaron and Winnie and what they're doing over there, and we're going to collect money to fix our building up. I mean, that just doesn't make sense to me in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Naturally, we have to take care of our building. I mean, that's what we need to do. There's, there's nothing wrong with taking care of the building. You're wrong. Well, I'm thinking to myself, that so they could use that money and, and buy thousands of pounds of bananas. I don't know how you know, or, or food for the, those people. Their people have nothing. They have nothing. They, their kids, there's their uh, bag of whatever it is in that bag, and they're, they're, they're fleeing because they don't want to be killed uh, by these groups that are killing people. Job was in a bad situation, too. But he never, his wife had said to him, curse God and die, right? My wife would never tell me that. But um, curse God, and he still did not deny uh, Jesus, our God, his creator, and he, re he was rejoiceful, and God restored to him everything that was lost, plus more. Amen? God's, like, the God's economy is way different than ours. And all of a sudden, Job got all that stuff back, rejoicing. And again, what does it say? Look at the next part of that verse. It says, I will say again, rejoice always. Amen? Always rejoice. Always be happy. Always, it's actually a fruit of the spirit. Amen. So if I if I'm walking in the spirit, one of the fruits of the spirit is joy. Amen. So if you're not if you're a grumpy person, nobody here, of course. If if you're grumpy, then you're probably not walking in the spirit of God. Hello. Don't look at me so mean. You know I'm right. We have to walk with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Because when we do, we glorify God. Amen? 
Why are you so happy? You went through all this stuff. Why do you got a big smile on your face? Because I know my creator. Even though I have these trials and these tribulations, I know he sustains me. I know he's going to be there for me. Amen. My hope is not in this world. My hope is in God himself. That's all I have. Amen. And sometimes that's all we have. <laughs> um, anyway, in uh, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, I guess I said at 8, it's in page 361 of my Bible. Let me read this to you. It says, um, well, it, let's turn there. Let's turn there. For some of us that are new, let's turn there. Yeah, um, it, uh, after Micah, there's two, two, two books, uh, Ze uh, Zephaniah. Uh, right before there, it's in my Bible. It's right in, in, in the Old Testament, Old Prophets. Uh, minor Prophets, they call it. If you can find it, Habakkuk. 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 Something like that. I'm not Jewish, I can't. Okay. Habakkuk. Hey, uh, Jason, how do you say that word? <laughs> we'll get the, we'll get the right. It's got a thing at the end. It's kind of not like an English word. It's, it's a Jewish word. Habakkuk. 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 <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay, chapter three, and verse 17. seventeen, and and the whole prayer uh, from verse three. Uh, chapter three is a prayer. Uh, for for the, uh, the for the Jewish people, but this part I think is relevant for us too. It says, though the fig trees do not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crops fail and the fields produce no food, though uh, there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stall, uh, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. So you can just kind of make, make your own little prayer there. You know, you can say, use that. Thing. Even though my bank account is empty and maybe an insurance company didn't fix my car when I got hit by the year, and even though I have a deductible of a thousand dollars, even though you know you fill in the blank your life, right? Even though all this stuff is crazy in my life, yet I'll rejoice in the Lord. Amen. If you leave here today, I hope that's one thing you that you could just take away with you today. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord the Lord, because He is worthy to be praised, and He's going to provide all that we need. Amen? Rejoice in Him. It, it changes us. Paul remind, Paul started off with this because he said, listen, this is very important. I'm going, to, I'm going to end this letter, but I want you to understand, rejoice. If persecution comes against the church, rejoice. Every, if anything happens, you're like, rejoice in Him. Amen? And then it says, let, uh, let your gentleness be evident to all. And I'm thinking about Aaron and Winnie out there serving those people. They went there to work with the youth uh, in that area. They have uh, 50, I think, 50 kids, youth that come. They're not, they're, some don't know where their parents are. They come to their little gathering a couple times a week. They feed them. They, they teach them about Jesus. They, have, uh, uh, they do activities with them. But now they're caught up in this, uh, all these refugees. And so their whole ministry now focuses change. And, and their kindness and their love is being shown to those people. Maybe some of them they'll never see again. But you know, I think that's how God works. Okay, they meet Aaron and Winnie here. They go get in this bus. They travel to another place. And they're going to meet another Christian here. And then they go to another place because they, they're eventually will find a place to stay. And they'll find some more Christians there. And somebody will open up their home to them. Or whatever. But they'll see the kindness of God through that journey. Amen? And hopefully all those Muslim people that are, that are running right now will come to know Jesus as Lord Savior. See, I believe in my heart there's a kind of a revival going to happen before this whole destruction that everybody thinks is going to happen in the world. Oh, the world's falling apart. It's go doom, doom, doom. It's time for us believers to stand up and start doing the things of God. Amen? And then when all has failed, and, and the world failed them, and the Social Security checks stop, and, and, and all the welfare money is gone, and there's, you know, the city can't afford to put people in housing, where are they going to go? They're going to come to us because we're going to open up our houses, right? We have to, we're going to practice hospitality. We're going to love on people. We're going to see the world change because of our kindness one for another. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what's going to happen next. But my prayer is that I be like Jesus. That my prayer is that I, I'm compassionate and loving and caring and I can take people to know this Lord and Savior that I know. And it might be a sacrifice. I may have to give up some stuff. I might have to actually give money away. Look at the next part. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. Do 
Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petitions, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Be anxious. Don't. What's that word anxious? It just means uh, have no fear, have, don't have no worry, no doubt. All that stuff out of your mind, right? Fear, fear is cast out of our lives by God's love, right? Perfect love casts out fear. Where does fear start? Right in our heads. We start thinking, oh, this is impossible. I can't do this. God, I, where's God at? We just start fearing. We start worrying about our lives. And I think, I think we need to be healed from that fear. I think God brings, can bring healing to that doubt and that worry and all the stuff of life. We need to be healed in our minds. And, and God, heal. Let's, let me do that. I'll pray for you right now. Let, let's just, just close your eyes. And I want you, um, I want you to take all your problems right now. I want you to put them in the, the palm of your hand. Can you do that for me? Can you just say, God, I got this bill and this stuff. Careful, because I think of things you guys are going through. So I just, Lord, just put them in your hand. And Father, I know that your love is greater than all the junk we have in our hands right now. Father, I pray that you just take them away and replace them with joy. Would you just kind of give it over to God right now? Can you just do that? Here, Lord, it's yours. Hallelujah, it's yours, Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Father, for taking all my burdens. You were telling us that we not cast give over to you our burdens, that your yoke is easy and your burdens are light. Hallelujah. I found those scripture verses together. Your yoke is easy and your burdens light. This, this, this life as a Christian is easy. This is easy because I have to do is trust in you, God. I'm walking with you. I'm communicating with you. I'm trusting you. Guide me, Lord, by your spirit. For the burden of this world, I give over to you, Father. And I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cast your cares upon him, and he cares for you. Don't be anxious for anything, but everything with prayer and supplication. Don't be afraid. You know, it's like, um, like if I'm, I'm afraid about something and I go to, or, or let's say Tina's afraid about something, I'm usually with that, and she comes to me and she says, honey, I'm so worried about this, you know, we got all these bills, we got whatever the situation is, and she comes to me and I go, oh, honey, it's okay, it'll be fine, right? But when I go to God and say, God, I have all these problems and these situations, it's not like a fine thing. It's not like, okay, God, I know God's going to take care of it. Amen? I'm just going to say, oh, don't worry. I mean, it's fine. We'll, we'll make it. It'll be good. But when I give it over to God, it's like, God, I have these problems. And I have these situations. I'm giving it over to you. Guess what? I know he's capable. I know he's going to take all those problems. I know he's going he's to fix it for me. Amen? And the key part of this whole thing is the next day, we don't carry that. We don't pick those things back up again. Right? Okay, so I'm happy for this 24 hours. Oh, oh, I trust God. I'm happy. Me and my wife pray together. We're trusting God. He's going to take care of it. And next day, oh my God, there's another bill in the mail. Like, what am I going to do with this? And we pick up all those worries again and all those pain. Can we trust God to take it to the end? Huh? We can't because He can't take care of it. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh.
Praise the Lord. Um, let's go. Uh, in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says this, Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. So we read that. And then also, um, <coughs> let me see. Okay, the next part it says right here, it says, uh, Be anxious for nothing. Uh, be anxious about, do not be anxious for anything. Thank you. <coughs> But in everything, let me say it again. Do not be anxious for anything. I'm just kind of speaking that over you, really, why I repeat it. All right, I'm speaking that over you. Be anxious uh, for, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything. So, what does the word everything mean? Richard, what does it mean? Everything. It means everything. The, the, the Greek translation, the English translation here is exactly the same. <laughs> you really have to be a scholar on this one. But in everything, by prayer, I'm so, I'm so shaky here. I just, I want you guys to get this. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So we're going to do this. I, I think, uh, I read an article by uh, Jim Cimbala. Anybody know who Jim Cimbala is? He's a, a gospel choir, a New York gospel choir, Tabernacle Choir. He's a director, pastor of the church. He wrote an article this past week that, um, that I just love. He says, um, people are, are making prayer requests up to God. They're praying about everything. They're praying, they're sending their requests up to God, and like, God is not answering them, and so they're praying and praying. And he says all the, he said he, it was like a vision he had. He was sharing this. There's like a mail room in heaven. So all the prayers go through the mail room. And the ones that don't have a stamp on it don't go to the other side. Okay, follow me for a second. So prayers are going up to heaven. They're going up to heaven. And, and they're in this post office, the prayer post office, I guess you could call it. But there's no, uh, nothing's getting through the other side because they don't have stamps on them. And the stamps that go through, the prayers that go through, are the ones that have a stamp of thanksgiving. Think about that. God, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. And then we go do our thing. Right? Those prayers are just like stuck in the post office. They don't have any stamp. They can't go any forward, right? Return to sender. Try it again. Right? But when you pray... With thanksgiving, it's like a stamp. You're saying, oh God, I know you. you're thanking him. It's like an attitude of gratitude. I'm just thanking God because I know you're going to take care of this problem in this situation. Thank you, Lord. And then I can rejoice. Praise God. Hallelujah. God, you took care. I know you're going to take care of it. I know. I thank you, God, because you are worthy. God, you said you would take care of this. No matter what my needs were, you said you'd take care of it. And my sins are forgiven because of Jesus. Oh, thank you. Jesus. And those prayers go through that. And he said they that they're meant. Huh? So look at what it says again. <clears throat> it says, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So with thanksgiving, so we 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 Paul's Paul by the Spirit of God wrote this this way. For a reason. Not only that you pray to God, that you thank Him for what He's done for you. Could you imagine what it would be like in your house if you just thank God for everything? Thank you for my food. Thank you for my house. Thank you for my car. Thank you for my wonderful wife. Thank you for my wonderful kids. Thank you for my grandbabies. I love my grandbabies. You drive me crazy sometimes, but I love them. Amen? They can pop by. They come out in the house. When they come see me, they, yeah, I love it. I love it. And two more are coming back to Wisconsin here shortly. So that's going to have all five grandbabies here. So I'm not really, really going to be happy. Amen? But it's just thanking God for the things that... I remember when I was a... We first got saved. We were 19 years old. Um, we didn't know nothing. We were, we, were, we were... I was in the military. My paychecks were $450 a month. $475, excuse me. I got $25 because I was married. Um... We had nothing, but we had everything, right? I mean, we had an old car. I don't know how that car ran, you know? I mean, it was crazy. We pray over that car. Um, God would answer prayer all the time, amen? 
And we were leading people to Jesus all week after week after week. It was amazing because we just gave God thanks for it. Why are you so happy? Because, you know, my hope and joy is not in this world. Amen. And we remember the old songs we used to sing in that church that uh, we were going to, you know, there's a mansion in heaven. You go to the first Thessalonians and read about how we're going to meet with Jesus. And so our hope is knowing that he's coming back. And oh, I had not understand it, but I just knew it would be greater than what we have now, you know? We lived in an old trailer. It was broken down. The floors were broken. There's cockroaches in that place. That, oh, my God. Uh, sorry, Ellie. Um, I'm still apologizing for that. I don't know how, I don't know how we survived, but God brought us through. We met. We had shrimp almost every night for dinner, right? We'd go out into the river, throw a net, get a bunch of shrimp, come home, clean it up, and have shrimp. I mean, we didn't eat. We were living large in an old broken down trailer house. I mean, it was amazing. But God, we were just so happy. We'd go to sleep. Just listen, we couples, listen. We, we would fall asleep. I remember early when somebody told us, we, well, as a husband and wife, we should pray together. I said, okay, well, that's good. I'm a new Christian. I'm going to do what that sounds good. So we'd pray together. We'd pray at night. We'd, we'd, we'd go to bed. We'd read our Bible. Then we'd pray. And we'd pray, right? And we'd pray all night long. I don't think we ever slept. I don't know if we slept. Maybe we slept, but when we woke up, when I woke up in the morning, I was still praying. It's crazy, right? I said, well, we're praying all night long. She said, I don't know. We just would get up. We'd be so happy. We'd be, God, the presence of God would be in our house. We'd get, get up, get ready, put on our Sunday best, go to church, rejoicing and praising God, right? I mean, people thought we were nuts. My people at my work, my, mil my Marines that I worked with, they just thought I was crazy. Well, how can you be so happy, Cash Robot? Because I know my Savior, who is Jesus, amen? That's why we don't rejoice. That's why we're not happy as Christians. Because we don't know God. We don't know Him. I told my son, I told Christopher, I said, you know, I just want to get back to that point that all I think about is the presence of God. All I want is to be in His presence. I want to know Him. Amen? It's not, and we, we talk about it often here, you know, it's not about going to church on Sunday. It's we are the church. We, we are the body. We love each other. We take care of each other. Amen? We are about it. Wait, but do we know Him? What motivates us to help the people like they do with uh, the Arab refugees? What helps us to help our neighbor? What, what motivates us to is Jesus, amen? So I want to reflect Jesus in my life, in every part of my life. That's what I've been praying over the last few uh, months now. Am I really reflecting Jesus? Or I, I have a position, I'm a pastor, so I have this thing. No, I don't care about that anymore. I used to. Don't get me wrong, I went through that phase. Can I go through that? God blesses you. You, you. you think you're somebody. But the best place to be is humble, rejoicing. I can't do anything without you, God. You give him all the glory. Amen? That's, that's, a, that's a perfect place to be. Amen? And when you trust him for your life, when you trust him, then his answers are always coming. Amen? And it might not be what you want, but he's always going to answer you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Be anxious for nothing. Pray about everything with thanksgiving about everything. Amen. Let me say it again. Be anxious for nothing. Pray about everything with thanksgiving for everything. Thank God for everything. Everything. Amen. You, your kids are, get, are, just, are, are not doing what you want to do. Thank God for them. Your schoolwork isn't going right. Thank God for your professors. Amen. Everything is out in turmoil in your life. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. And then when it's all good, this is where we fail sometimes. When it's all good, when God's answered all those prayers and everything you're on the other side and you're not really happy because you've got the answer, you've got to be thankful too. Amen. You've got to be thankful too because if not, you're going to go right back to the same stuff again. Come on, folks. It's the way, way it works sometimes. When God is teaching us about to build our faith, build our faith, trust Him, trust Him. And all of a sudden we go through a trial, tribulation, and get on the other side. Woo! -hoo! Thank you, God, for answering our prayer. And then all of a sudden something else happens and we're now we're all worried again. No. We're, he's training us to go from every trial, every tribulation, every situation to be rejoiceful and be happy in it because God is there with you. You're not going through the thing alone, ever, if you really believe in Jesus. Amen. That's why I say you got to get to know Him. you got to get to know Him. you got to get to know the Father's love and the heart of the Father. you got to know who Jesus is and His compassion for the world. I want to be like Him. We're supposed to be like Jesus. And you know what's so beautiful? We're going to teach on this uh, here in a few weeks. We're going to be teaching a series on the Holy Spirit. And He gave us the Holy Spirit because He knew we couldn't do it on our own. 
Right? He knew fear was going to come on, and the Holy Spirit comes and reminds us, listen, you don't have to. Perfect love, God's perfect love casts out fear. Trust in that. Amen. Will you trust in that? And the Holy Spirit reminds you, and as you read the Word of God, it gets into your spirit, and it begins to get into your mind, right? Get into your mind and your heart, and your spirit begins to change, because now I trust Him. Because I know His love, because He loved me. He loves you and me today. And he wants to take care of every anxiety, every fear. Because look what happens when this happens. When we trust him. When we cast all our cares upon him. When we pray to him. When we, when we do it with thanksgiving. This is what happens next. Look at the verse scripture here. For you that don't know, that are learning, one of the things that Christians, uh, I should share this in the beginning, but one of the things Christians struggle with is prayer. How do I pray? How do I pray? How do I, I go to God and I'm standing there or sitting there or laying there or whatever, I don't know what to say. Well, sometimes that's good to sit there because he'll talk to you, all right? Guaranteed. He'll, he'll come in and fill your place and he'll talk to you. But he's like, how do I pray? So Paul, uh, uh, the disciples asked Jesus the same question. How do I pray? And you know in Matthew chapter 6, it gives the Lord's Prayer, right? I mean, are you know where that, you know what I'm talking about? Our Father who art in heaven. I don't know, he's a Catholic. Um, hallowed be your name, right? And you had this prayer. Jesus gave this model prayer. He would say, let's turn there. Let's just turn there real quick. And um, Matthew chapter 6, it's on page 888 in my Bible. Um, this, is, this is free. It's not in my notes. So this is for you. We're learning how to, we want to pray. I want to pray to God. I have trouble praying to God. How do I pray to God? Jesus said, this is, do this. If you would do this, this would be a good thing. This would help you learn how to pray. Because our Father in heaven Soon after this, Jesus was going to be uh, crucified. He was going to raise from the dead. And the curtains in the temple was going to be ripped from top to bottom. You know the story, right? And then what happens? He says that we can now go boldly into the throne room of God. Jesus knew that. So he's going to share this story. He's going to share it with the disciples. Hey, listen, this is what I want you to do. You go into the throne room and it says, Our Father who art in heaven. You're just praying to him. You're thanking him. Your Father, you are so amazing. You are like the best father. You do everything perfect. You are just so amazing. Amen? And then he says to them, uh, um, Hallowed be your name, or praise him. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God's kingdom is greater than any kingdom in the world. Amen. Even the kingdom that you set up in your own household. God's kingdom is better than that. Amen? God should rule every aspect of our lives. Right? There's a perfect way to run a household. There's a perfect way to be. And I want to be like that. Am I perfect? No. I'm trying to be perfect. Right? We talked about that before. So your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Well, thank God for what you have. Not what you don't have. Thank you for this meal. See, that's why I stopped saying God bless our meal. And my heart started changing. Lord, bless our food. Hallelujah. No. I say, God, thank you for this meal. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my wife. Thank you, God. Amen? And that changes. It's something inside me. I can't tell you what it is. It's just different. It's not about me anymore. Don't bless. I don't care. It's not. I'm not saying bless me, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless me, Lord. I'm saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is good stuff. Change, change from... What I want to thank God, and it changes my world around me. It you know, it changes here. It changes my mind, the way I think about God. It changes my heart. It just changes me when I begin to thank Him. Amen. That's what Paul was. I wish you just tell us that. He was saying, "Forgive us our debts, and as we forgive our debtors, forgive God my sins, and forgive the people that sin against me." Ooh, that's a whole other sermon for another time, right? Forgive those who despitefully use me. Forgive. God, help me to forgive. And God was showing them that. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Right? And so look, look back to Philippians uh, chapter 4. And it's another prayer. This is another prayer model. Don't be anxious for anything, but everything in prayer and petition. And with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And this is what happens when you do. God always gives us a promise. God always gives us like something, a nugget that we hang on to that helps us in our life. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Right? Now look at it, look at it again. Let me repeat it one more time. It says, and the peace of God. 
Not the peace of man. Not the peace of this world. Not the peace I can give my wife. Not that peace. No, a peace that comes only from God. This, this peace is a perfect peace. This is a wonderful peace. It's in Him, this peace is. It's amazing. I don't understand it. I can't even explain it, to tell you the truth. I'm going to do my best. And the peace of God, which transcends all my understanding, all my knowledge, all everything that I can look up in the dictionary on Google, everything, I can't fi find it, figure it out. It says, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So it's in Christ. Christ provided the peace. Amen? Look at Romans chapter 1. Go to Romans chapter 1. I'm almost done. I mean, five, I'm sorry, five, one. Five, one, circle this in your Bible, Jason. Five, one. Oh, I'm getting excited. Praise Jesus. Romans, Acts, Acts, Romans. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, all oh my soul. Words. I wish I could sing them. I just try my best. <laughs> yeah, got it? Is it? It says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. We say we have peace. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace. How are you justified through faith? I believe. I believe. I believe everything the Lord God says about Jesus. Amen. I believe that when I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins, I was forgiven. I can tell you the day, the time, I can tell you the place when the peace of God that transcends all understanding, wrapped me in a bubble in that jail cell. It was amazing. I can't, I can't even, I get goosebumps just thinking about it right now because the peace of God came over me. And I knew that that moment, I was justified. I was made clean. I was cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. All my past sins were gone. I was a new creature in Christ. I was a new person. My mind was changed. My heart didn't have fear. There were no worries. <coughs> Amen. It was gone. It was wiped out because I trusted in Him. That's faith. Trusting in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God that I can't figure out will come and change my life. Amen. That's what He said right here. Go back to Philippians 4. Step out of that 
we're all different times, right? We have to trust God, and the peace of God will be with you always. Always. Here. It's what's said right here, right? But it's in Christ Jesus. Right? So, as I close, let me just read the last part of this, this chapter 4, and I'll close with this. And I just want to, what I'm going to do is I want to have Tina, why don't you go on the piano, Tina? And uh, can we play the first song with the, uh, what was the first song with the video? Can we do that? What is that? What was that? Unending Praise. Unending Praise, that's the, yeah. Can you get that ready, Justin? Thank you. We're going to end with that, all right? And um, I, I want you to, uh, we're going to stand in just a minute. We're going to stand. And we're gonna, we're, we're gonna sing the song and then in praise, hallelujah. And if there's something in your life that you're just struggling with and you just need, it says with prayer and supplication, right? It doesn't say you have to pray alone, right? You can pray with us as believers. We can pray together. Um, and listen, just look around the room here. I want you to pray for everybody that's here. And then everybody's not here today. Can you do that? So me and Ella, and every, just everybody, everybody, just pray for everybody, just, just write them down, just pray for us this week, we pray that the anxiety, the fear, all that stuff would leave, that we would walk out uh, and be rejoiceful and happy and praising God, and it says on verse 8, let's go to verse 8, it says, finally brothers, and that word brothers means brothers and sisters, okay, so let's not get hung up on that part whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about these things oh my goodness there's a lot there that's a whole nother sermon for another day but listen, it says right there, look at what it says. It's saying all these things. So in my mind, I'm not going to have, uh, I'm not going to be uh, complaining. In my mind, I'm not going to be worried. In my mind, I'm not going to be anxious about my situation, right? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to think about positive things. So sometimes we don't have things to think about positively because we're, we're not in the word of God. If we're reading the word of God, all of a sudden the spirit of God recalls to us the word and the word overcomes that situation in our mind. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you to not only pray to God, but be in His Word, because I want to be able to think about what, it says right here, brothers and sisters, it says, whatever is true, well, what is, where is truth found? In the Word. This is the plumb line of truth for the whole world. Every situation in the world is, the truth is found in the Word of God. Whatever is noble, don't talk, think about bad things about your brothers or sisters, or about your neighbor who's not a brother or sister, amen? The lost people are lost. They act like lost people. You don't have to act that way, right? So there's a difference between you and the people that are unbelievers. They have worries. They, man, I picked up, uh, thank you, Lord. I picked up three girls from the emergency room, young ladies or college students, or probably freshmen, sophomore, uh, from the emergency room on um, one day this week. Friday. On Friday, thank you. And uh, their, their friend uh, was trying to commit suicide. So they were there. Uh, uh, supporting her, helping her. But when they got in the car, uh, they called me to take them back to campus. They were talking about her like she was dirt. I was thinking, if, you, if she was in the car, you wouldn't be saying the things. And I waited, and I waited, and I said, oh, the Lord, you want me to say something. You know, and they were just talking so fast, and they were so confused, and they were worried, and they didn't know what to do, you know? And they were just talking about how bad, and some of the things she's done, and, and I, I was just like, Lord, give me an opening, give me an opening, you know, I want to say something, you know? And at the end, of course, I did before he got out of the tower. But, you know, it's just, just the world's going to act like the world, is my thought. And they're just going to act like that. They have no hope in anything, right? They don't have what we have. We have Christ Jesus. We have Jesus. Oh, I'm going to tell you how I love Jesus so much. I remember so many stories when the kids were little and when they were sick or they're, you know, we may want to go to the hospital or you don't go to the hospital. Or holding the, holding the little ones and just praying, Jesus, you can heal this baby. Remember that one couple that came to our house late at night. Uh, the hospital said, well, we don't know. You can just stay home and bring her in the morning. You know, it's kind of sometimes a, they're like that. They're changed a lot in the hospitals nowadays than what they were back then. But a couple came to our house. It was late at night. It was like 11 o'clock at night, I think. And, and the baby was feverish. Really, I mean, big. I mean, 100 and something. We don't know because we didn't have a thermometer. But, you know, obviously very sick. And I remember 
the mom was distraught, daddy was distraught, Tino was taking care of it. I was like, give me a baby. I took the baby, I walked through the kitchen, our back door, went outside, and I said, God, this is your child. I said, will you heal this baby? And before I walked back into the living room, totally gone, no fever, the baby was giggling, and I gave him back to the parents. I guess I was tired, I wanted to go to bed. I said, here, and off they go, God, heal that baby. going through uh, stuff with our daughter, and his daughter. And they get like, I trust you, God. There's nothing, there's nothing in this world, there's no one I can turn to, there's no knowledge, there's nothing I can do, but I trust you, God, to take care of her. And the peace of God. Remember, we were up in the hotel, and uh, we just went away for a couple days after Elizabeth took off, and, and uh, we were, we yelled at each other, we were yelling at God, we were just, you know, then we finally wound up laying on the bed, just praying and asking God uh, to take care of her. God's presence filled the room. It was amazing. You know, God can take care of all your problems, every situation. We just have to have faith and trust Him. Our hope is, oh, I love Jesus. Put this into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The last part of that, verse 9, whatever you have, learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Can we, can we stand? Can we, Tina, you be us? And that's what we're going to do an old fashioned altar call today. Alright? I, I, don't, I don't need to pray for you. I'm a pastor. Andy doesn't need to pray for you. Richard, we don't need to pray for you. But listen, I'm gonna, this is, we're going to make this all the time. In the church I used to go up, we had the same kind of little thing. We used to come and kneel here. And I, in my mind's eye, sometimes I, when I kneel in front of the altar, it was like I was kneeling at the very feet of Jesus. And I remember one time. And my mind, I, I looked up and I saw his very feet in front of me. I said, oh, Jesus, all this is your heart. I give it all to you. I leave it here. And, oh, my goodness, the peace of God filled my heart. I just want to do that today. As we sing, as you feel led to, just come and, uh, and be in his presence. And allow him to take whatever cares, whatever worries, whatever situations in your life. Just give it over to him. Amen. And then leave it there.